functional youth directorate. The constitution of the party has given provision for directorate of organization, directorate of publicity, directorate of finance, directorate of uh, what other directorate is there? Okay. But organization, but somehow, somehow it left out the most critical component of the party, the directorate of young youth people, of youth, which is the engine room of mobilization. And I think it should be corrected as part of the things we are going to recommend for the party. All these are still conversations we are having in the pipeline. We would continue to consult with each and every one of you through more meetings like the recently held sessions to come up with a robust proposal and draft for changes we want to see in the documents that guide the affairs of the party. Well, so far, so good. Our party, under the current leadership of the caretaker committee, has set up several committees, especially those dedicated to the selection of candidates and hosting of campaigns, especially in Edo and Ondo. We have ensured that there is more representation of our young people in these committees. We would also ensure that it stays so and it gets better. And part of my argument with the committee level and with the party is that for every committee, no matter the number, if it is three people, there should be at least one young person. If it is five people, there should be at least one young person. If it is 10 people, there should be at least three young people. Let our people be part of building this party and committee work is part of it. The way to building a greater party is by inclusiveness, by listening, by sharing ideas and opportunities, and by being, you know, really brothers and sisters. This is what we hope would be the ideals of the greater, stronger, more inclusive party. It is not impossible, and I believe that we have the passion and the character to make this work. You know, I'm a realist, and I know the media are here, so I'm going to couple, say a couple of few things. I'm a realist in the sense that I understand the situation we're in. We're all leaders in our own right. We may have banters, and it's a political party. Political party, a lot of people come with their personal interests, disguised sometimes in other kinds of interests. My only problem that I keep repeating all the time is that there's no, there's no problem with a self interest. It is selfish interest that becomes a problem. Politics is emotional. It's interest driven most of the time. It's either your personal interest, your communal interest, your societal interest, your patriotical interest. Whatever it is, there is an interest somewhere. What we abhor is selfish interest. And like one of my former governors in Kano used to say, it means it's not as if I don't want you to eat, but I just don't want you to eat in a way that you stop others from eating. Now, when I say eat, I don't mean corruption, no, for you media people. It means the ability to participate to the exclusion of everybody else makes it selfish. And that destroys the fabric of political cohesion. We won an election two years after forming the party. Some would say it's luck. Some would say APC won the election. Some would say Jonathan lost the election. There's a difference between Jonathan losing the election and APC winning. If you say Jonathan lost the election, which means he could have won if he had done a few things right. If you say APC won, is that it was our hard work that made us win. I believe that we worked hard in 2015. I believe we won fair and square. But we're getting towards 2023. And for the first time in 20 years, since 2003, 2023 election would be an election without an incumbent running for re-election or a Buhari on the opposition party. And whether anybody likes it or not, President Muhammad Buhari remains singularly, singularly the biggest bringer of votes for APC. 
If you don't have him on the ballot in 2023, what you have is the edifice of the party itself. If we do not put our hands together to build this party, and it starts from us as young people all. Because like I said, all the time, all these big names, they have somewhere else to go to. All these big names, they have somewhere else to go to. Once they don't, they don't find it comfortable here, they can jump to another party and say, you know what, I'm a former governor in that other party. Give me three slots in your new ESCO, and they will give him. If you, if you join another party now, you have to start at the bottom of the queue. So, APC is here to stay. The future belongs to us. We can build it as we please. Let's work together to make it happen. And each and every one of you here is a leader in his own right because he's a leader in his state. And I know some are there because they are representing an interest of somebody. But there is a responsibility on you now to make things happen within your state. We have a plethora of activities that we intend to do going forward. Those activities, we are going to roll them out. We intend to go to all the zones. The party has a lot of things to do. Some of which I'm sure when the decision is made, it will be communicated to all the strata of the party down the line. But before that happens, I want us as young people and as leaders within our sectors, if this party has 12 million members, I can assure you 8 million are young people. Then who owns the party? We do. So let's bond together. I'm not saying there will not be quarrels and we will not have misunderstanding as we go along. We will. There are things you might come up with that we may not agree with. There are things we will tell you to do that the peculiar circumstances of your particular locality or state may not allow you to do. Or the person you are representing. It's not as if most people don't want to perform. But because people are holding positions in trust for other people, you see a youth leader who is a youth leader, but he's holding a position that his leader gave him. So he cannot do anything in the interest of the youth because he cannot come back to you to get your ideas and take it back to whatever he's representing because what somebody else brought him to come and sit on his behalf. That needs to change. If you are going to be a youth leader, be there because you are passionate about the position and you intend to defend the interests of the people you represent. It's difficult in this kind of terrain. It's a difficult politics. But hey, I don't see any development without difficulties. You have to make your voices heard. We have a wonderful chairman, we have a wonderful committee, we have the support of the president 100%. If there is any other time that this party is going to see real changes, it is this short period that this caretaker is going to be around. I can assure you of that. Because for the first time, the caretaker has the full backing, full backing of the neck and the executive and the president. Full 100% backing. So we have to do our own job. And in doing that, we have to collaborate with you so that you can do yours as well very fluently. So we're going to open a lot of discussion. We're going to have a lot of discussion. But what I just want us to remember is that 2023 is around the corner. A political party is not supposed to be jumping hoops from one election cycle to another. But unfortunately, 2023 is an all commas game. You don't have an incumbent running for president. You don't have a Buhari that is going to give you 10 million votes on the other side. So it's an all commerce fight. So a lot of people would come at you with all kinds of interests. But we as young people can band together and actually make this party a very permanent structural edifice. And we can make something out of it. We can participate at the lowest level. And I intend in the coming weeks, I've spoken to some of the Zona Youth leaders here, that we are going to charge each and every one who calls himself a young person within this party to be having a three-month word meeting and send us pictures. If you call yourself a leader in this party, and I give the president today's advice, I say from the president downward, 
at least once in every six months, everybody should go to his ward, not local government, ward. Ward meeting. Imagine if we have ward meetings every six months and the president attends his ward meeting and the people in his ward know that they can go to their ward meeting and see the president once in six months. Will they leave the party? No. The Senate president will do the same thing, governors will do the same thing, you youth leaders will do the same thing, all of us will do the same thing. Don't come and sit in Abuja because you are elected and think you can do whatever you want. You have to go back to the root and hear the people from the grassroots and let there be communication as possible. So before our leaders, and the president loved that idea. The president loved that idea. It's something that he intends that is going to happen. But before they start doing that, we as young people will have to lead by example. We are now the leaders, whether anybody likes it or not, we are now the leaders. So we will lead by example. While they are there jumping from one court to another, we will show them how to build a political party, and this is our time to do that. Thank you very much.